we need to start looking at a couple powers. The other thing that leading term test tells us is the power. Now we've seen x squared like this where it has two solutions. We've even seen x squared where it had no solutions. But you can also have x squared where you have a single solution. In this case, x squared itself meets only at zero, but it has x equals zero. Now, if I were to take something of the following, if I said this one, where it just comes down and touches at 1, the equation for this would be x squared, I'm sorry, x minus 1 squared. What that means is 1 is the solution, but x minus 1, x minus 1 happens twice. So I have two solutions, they just happen to be exactly the same. We call these solutions of multiplicity two. If you have an even number on the multiplicity, it's just going to touch or be tangent to the x-axis. If you have an odd number, it's going to go through. Now, we also have seen a cubic function where it crosses just once here at zero, zero. In in this case, we have a cubic function, but it's going to have a number of other pieces that go along with it. And it could potentially cross one, two, three times. So remember, fundamental theorem of algebra says it can cross up to three times, but it may not cross all three times. You also notice we have power of two, two possible solutions, or one turning point, one less than the power. And so in that case, we come up with one turning point here. But over here, we have a power of three, and I have one place where it turns around, two places where it turns around. Do remember that in even functions, they have, the ends have to go the same way. So you have even functions versus odd functions. Okay, so if I have squared, cubed, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, okay, so in this case, even function of four, you'll notice I have two solutions, but remember I could have up to four with one, two, three turning points three turning points because it's one less than four. Over here for x to the fifth, I have one, two, three, four turning points, one less than five, and one, two, three solutions, not necessarily five. So we need to begin dealing with what is the general shape of the graph, what does the leading term tell us about it, and I'm going to put a few problems for you. Okay. There's the problem. I need you to tell me the number of solutions, number of possible solutions, number of possible turning points, actual number of turning points, the orientation, the end behavior of this graph, and be able to explain why based on information from the equation.